Say it with me, friends. Kenzo is donezo. Kenzo is donezo. Yeah, I'll stop singing, I'm sorry. So what am I talking about here? Well, in case you haven't heard, Kenzo has fired, they just kicked this guy to the curb. They fired their creative director, Felipe Oliveira Baptista. Now, that's kind of crazy because he'd been there for only like a year, two years, something like that. Basically his entire tenure with the house happened during COVID. So I kind of feel for the guy. Like if I were him, I feel like I didn't even get to do anything that I was trying to. I didn't even get to show what I'm doing yet or who I am or what I want Kenzo to be. He was creating everything in lockdown mode, especially in France where the brand is based. Things were super locked down there. So I do feel for him, but at the same time, I understand why he was let go. So Kenzo is owned by LVMH, who also owned Dior and Louis Vuitton and massive brands like that. So if they own a brand, they are looking for it to make insane amounts of money, like raining money amounts of money. And actually, for a long time, Kenzo was pretty dang good at that. Because before Felipe was the creative director, they had a duo there, uh, Carol Lim and Humberto Leon, who were from opening ceremony. And they really revitalized the house by doing really sellable, ready to wear pieces, really fun, colorful, playful, stuff like that. And people loved it. Think about the tiger head motif, sweaters and sweatshirts and colorful polo shirts and stuff like that. It's just really easy wearable stuff that people wanted to have in their closets and that they were willing to pay for. Another thing that was really good that those two designers, the old ones did, was they worked within a certain price point. They knew that Kenzo doesn't have the cachet, the complete like luxury, all omnipresence of Louis Vuitton or Dior or whoever. So they were making things at a much lower price point so that people could see it and still think, oh, that's a luxury piece, but it's not gonna break the bank like one of those massive brands would. Felipe though took it in a way different direction. He really left behind that really simple ready to wear stuff. And he said, I'm gonna do more fashion. And he really, said that he was doing it to be within the tradition of the founder of the brand, Kenzo Takata. And in a way, I understand that because Kenzo was like a legit fashion designer. So if you're trying to be true to him and his intentions, I understand why you'd want to do that and do more like real runway shows and things like that. But he really lost what had made the modern Kenzo so successful because what he was doing was some really weird like nature utilitarian, flowing workwear, it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. And that's unfortunate because I'd actually become quite a big Kenzo fan under Carol Lim and Humberto Leon. But Felipe's stuff was just kind of odd. Like it felt to me like a weird, cross, like a, a, a demon baby cross between the nature stuff that Ricardo Tichy has been doing at Burberry lately and the weird sculptural workwear of Craig Green. It was just a marriage that didn't make a lot of sense. And I honestly didn't see much of that connection to Kenzo Takata, the founder that he was claiming to do it for. Sure, he used color and things like that, but it was actually really muted and kind of blah and never spoke to me. And it was like fashion-y like Kenzo's stuff, but Kenzo Takata was so sick, he was so playful, so open, and this stuff just wasn't. I actually thought the previous iteration of Kenzo made a lot more sense in that history than Felipe's recent stuff did. And of course, there's always a business side to these decisions as well. Honestly, that's probably most of the factor that goes into these decisions. And from that perspective, it still makes a lot of sense. So like I said, if you're an LVMH company, they're looking for you to just make money, print money. And I don't think Kenzo is doing that. People really weren't talking about them. I didn't see people hyping them up. I didn't see people talking about wanting to buy pieces, about considering pieces that are grails. It was just kind of there. So I don't think that turned into very many sales for the parent company LVMH. And it's kind of telling that in their most recent earnings report, they didn't even mention Kenzo at all. LVMH was just like, 
yeah, Kenzo doesn't exist. They're doing so badly that we're not even gonna mention them. We're just gonna talk about how sick Dior and Louis Vuitton are. Um, so clearly it wasn't selling and it wasn't connecting with customers in the ways that Kenzo has in the past. Of course, I understand wanting to be true to Kenzo, the founder of the brand. But in my opinion, in 2021, where we are right now, the true heart and soul of the house has kind of been put forward by Carol Lim and Humberto Leon. It's kind of like Tom Ford at Gucci. He didn't found Gucci, but he really defined the modern codes of the house. So in that way, when I think of Kenzo, I think of like that polo that Lil Peep wore in the Awful Things music video, super colorful. Of course, the, the tiger crest stuff and all these patterns, eye cat patterns, really cool pieces that only Kenzo could do. Well, actually that's, that's kind of not true. So let me break down for you how I always thought of Kenzo, at least the modern Kenzo. Or not the modern Kenzo, I'm losing it, you guys. So here's how I envision Kenzo being. If you made me the creative director of Kenzo, here is how I look at it, and here's how I kind of think that Carol Lim and Humberto Leon looked at it. So Kenzo is kind of like the step below Gucci. You know Gucci, like they're ready to wear their t-shirts, sweaters, sweatshirts, things like that. They're really colorful, fun, kind of 70s, retro inspired, very graphic, things like that. But they do that at a very, very high price point. That's where Gucci sits. But Kenzo does a very similar in that colorful, playful, retro sportswear vibe, but they do so at maybe a quarter of the price of Gucci which is awesome for customers, right? It's still high quality stuff and it's above like your typical department store things, but you're not gonna go totally broke buying it. So it's a great middle ground there and a great gateway into the entire luxury space, which is why I think in the past before Felipe, it was such a great little addition to the LVMH portfolio because you can get them in the door with the Kenzos and things like that and eventually hopefully graduate them up to Dior's, Louis Vuitton's, and things like that. So I'm really not trying to be a hater. Um, Felipe seemed like a nice guy. He wasn't the worst designer, but I really do think this was probably the right decision for the future of Kenzo if they want the company to stay relevant with the modern consumer. Yeah.